But good morning, welcome everybody, and welcome to those of you who are online on Facebook and YouTube as well. Welcome to church. It's a beautiful, sunny, and windy day here today, so it's been one of those weird yeah. conflicts where we had the, all the windows open, but then Dwayne put his really big coat on, and you so it's like, we're too hot, we're not, it was cold. we don't know, it was cold, it was weird, but we were getting warm from setting up, so there you go. But anyway, welcome to church. Who had an amazing Easter weekend last weekend? Come on. We had the best time in the park after church doing outreach last Sunday. It was awesome. And we'll be telling you some testimonies from that later. But um, in short, we were able to just get connected with and touch the lives of many, many, many families in Pinner who were just walking through the park. And so that was awesome and really exciting. So praise God. And we had some fun on some walkie-talkies as well, didn't we, Stephen? It was great. Um, but anyway, we're here to worship the Lord. We're here to have church together. So why don't we, just before we kick into worship, if you are new and visiting us today, why don't you give us a wave? See some new faces over there. Welcome, guys. Anybody else? Welcome. Lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us today for church. And those of you online as well who are new to the family, welcome. Welcome home. It's good to have you today. And so why don't we, why don't we worship, hey? You ready, Dwayne? Come on. Well, guys, when you're ready and however it looks for you, why don't you just position yourself before the Lord? In a, in a sense of engagement, in an attitude of worship and praise this morning.
church days after the Easter event these guys went into prayer they went into the upper room 
and they prayed 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 prayed until fire came so we say Lord we will wait we will wait for fire we will wait for Holy Spirit fire we will wait for heaven to invade earth God we will not go before you but we will wait for fire for fire for fire for fire for fire for fire we will you Lord for fire
right now. There's a moment, every voice in this place, I just felt it. Come on, let's sing it together. I want to see you as, a, as an orchestra together in unity. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice as something right now. Almighty One, the 
everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the one who is provider, the one who is healer, the one who is the Lord, the one who is the good shepherd, the one who is the door to eternity, the one who is the Prince of Peace, the one who is everything that we need, the one who is everything that we desire. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We lay everything else to one side. We lay it down. We lay it right now of opened eyes opened eyes and we're not opening for opportunity we're not opening them for for stuff of the world or even things that God can give us we want open eyes so we see him so that we see him so we see you Jesus why don't you just say open my eyes God open my eyes God just tell him tell him why because I want to see you I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you, Jesus. So we ask right now, even in this moment, Holy Spirit, that you would open the eyes of every person who's listening, online, in the room, outside the building, in the park. God, you would open eyes right now. And we proclaim into the atmosphere that seeing Jesus is not the inheritance of prophets. It's the inheritance of children of God. And so we all say yes. We want to see you, God. We want to see you, God. As Tanya comes up. I was walking the dog this morning and I just felt a real challenge on today for you at home and for everyone in the room that I felt God wanted to bring us into wholeness and I felt that there was a challenge against people who have segmented their life 
and they, they really pray about certain things and then they take authority over their own life in other things. That they're willing for God to invade in some areas, but they're, they're blocking God in other areas. I felt that there was like a spiritual fragmentation in the body of Christ. And God wanted, the word sozo means to bring wholeness. And in our Bibles, it's translated in, into salvation, into healing, into deliverance, into rescuing. All of those words are translated from the Greek sozo. But sozo literally means to bring everything together in a whole. And I felt God wanted to release an impartation today of wholeness. I felt that there were going to be eruptions of the supernatural, but it was going to come out of a wholeness, not out of an anointing in a moment. It was going to come out of full and whole children of God, knowing who He is, knowing who they are, and then living a supernatural life, not having supernatural moments. And in the charismatic church, we've been very good at celebrating supernatural moments, but I felt that there was an anointing on supernatural lives, not supernatural moments. And so if that's you, and if you want that, then I'm going to ask you just to respond in whatever way it looks like. And we just ask Holy Spirit that you would release an anointing for wholeness in the supernatural. And we repent for allowing fragmentation of our lives and differentiation into areas of sacred and secular or anointed and normal, mundane and supernatural. I felt the Lord say, you died. The natural finished. It's all supernatural now because you are a new creation. So why don't you just say something from South London. I'm having it. And don't lose. Don't lose that place. Don't lose that space. Just keep connecting. Just keep engaging with Jesus. He's doing something deep in the room. And I just want to talk to you through the journey that I've been on this morning. Everything was going wrong. Everything that could go wrong with media was going wrong with media after a really smooth start. And then Holy Spirit just asked me a question. But even in the midst of the chaos, even in the midst when things are not going great, even when everything was good at the beginning and then it crashed and burned, can you still look at me? Can you still be grounded in what I've told you? Can you still feel the God of peace? Can you still feel like your eyes set on me? It doesn't matter like if it's a whirlwind, if it's a chaos, if it can you engage with me? And I was just kind of like in this world. And I said, yes, Lord. As soon as I said yes, I could start worshiping again in the camera, behind the camera. And I just want you to just kind of receive that, like that, that you would get to speak and that you get to see Jesus in your everyday life when things are not going right, when things are not easy, when things are like, oh, in the circumstances, things like they're like basically like bashing on you and just like, and everything is not okay. Everything is okay because our God does not lie circumstances might lie so we tell our circumstances to bow down to the king of kings and the lord of lords so guys would you stand up with me would you stand up with me just let's surrender like if you can stand please stand with me and let's surrender jesus jesus we see you jesus we say yes and amen jesus as we were singing open the eyes of our hearts to actually be able to fully see you to rightfully see you it, it's not about emotions it's not about the hype it's not about it. in the midst of the crisis in the midst of things being hard we see you we see you we want you we want you and we say yes and amen we say we want to see you would you open the eyes of our heart and circumstances and i just speak right now over every single circumstances and circumstance in our life that is not reflecting the kingdom you bow down now to the name of jesus you bow down now to the name of jesus and may the fire of god be purifying us may the fire of god be the one in charge of our circumstances so circumstances you bow down now to the name and may our eyes be open to see open the eyes of our heart lord amen well if you have young people around you we are going to pray for them and then release them to fire kids 
And we're going to pray for them because we want them to have the same revelation, the same level of anointing, and the same lifestyles as adults filled with the Holy Spirit because it's the same Holy Spirit. And so, children, if you would like to make your way to fire kids, I'm going to ask everyone in the room and everyone at home to reach out their hand towards the young people and just pray a blessing on them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that they would be so filled with the glory and the anointing of God, that the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would come into fire kids, would be part of what they are doing, what they are saying, what they are receiving, and we just bless them in in Jesus' name, that they would know Him, that they would be raised up in lifestyles of glory in Jesus' precious name. Lifestyles of glory in Jesus' name. This week on uh, TBN, uh, Chloe and I were uh, interviewing Joshua Mills about glory. Honestly, you need to see that episode. Absolute glory bombs of revelation coming from Joshua during that and uh, yeah just talking about lifestyles of glory where God is known that's the glory realm where God is known amen amen, amen. Dan come on well I just thought off the back of what Tanya's just released I've been mulling over something for the offering this morning and I just think that's the perfect tee up because I, I just want to ask you guys a question when your circumstances don't look like God, when the unexpected happens, what do you do? Do you lean out from Him or do you lean into Him? What do you do? We lean in, right? Do we allow our circumstances to define our theology of God or do we allow God to be the one that we rely on in our circumstances? And, and I was thinking actually too often I think we don't apply that logic and that belief to our finances. Because... I know in my past, I've had times when the unexpected financial challenges have come in my life and I've gone, well, maybe I should tithe less so I can make space to give. And, and then actually, I was just wondering this morning, actually, how often when the unexpected finances come that we go, God, why have you allowed this thing to happen to me? Why have you allowed the locusts to come and feast upon my finances in my life? Rather than saying to ourselves, and this is what me and Ashley have trained ourselves to do now, is to ask the question, what have I done that's ungodly with my finances? What have I done that's made me lean out from here rather than lean into him? And we're going to take up an offering today, and I want to encourage you. I don't want this to be a really heavy slap or anything, but more an encouragement and an empowerment. The financial circumstances and giving in an offering of your tithes are two very separate things. Because one is God's given you 100%, and you're just saying, thank you, Lord, I give you back 10% of the 100 you gave me. Bill Johnson says this, he says that God is more capable of doing stuff with your 90% than you are with your 100%. Yeah. And we've got to get a mindset shift that changes from when we, if you stub your toe, you say, God, heal my toe. You don't say, God, why did you stub my toe? We need to have that same mindset to our finances that when unexpected things come, we don't go, God, why did you remove my finances? We say, finances, God's with me. You're going to shift in Jesus' name. And the step that starts with that is getting godly with our finances. And so instead of being swayed left and right by whether we have enough or too little, we say, God, I trust you in my 90% existence. So would you let me live exponentially greater than that? And so first of all, if you're not tithing, then talk to us. But please, tithe your money. Get godly with your finances. Give in offerings to him. Sow seeds so that he can reap a harvest for you. Because it says in the Bible that the farmer sows the seed, but God provides the rain. Amen. And, you know, a story from our life, so I can hopefully encourage you that I'm not just saying this stuff, but we believe it. We had an unexpected bill of £1,300 this week. Did we fall off our seat? No. We said, God, we trust you. We trust you that in this restriction, you are expansive. And so in your expansive nature, this restriction isn't a challenge. It's just something we're going to live in in a moment as we see your miraculous come. And so there is envelopes on the seats all around the room. If you are a taxpayer, then fill in your details on the envelope so the government can also give into what the kingdom is doing. 
If you are giving by cash, you can put the cash in those envelopes. We've got baskets, Andrew. Could we pass the baskets around? That'd be awesome, thank you. As the baskets come around, put your offerings in there, your tithes in there. But also, if you are a card giver, then please scan this QR code. If you don't know what that means, hold up your phone, open the camera, and it will do the rest. And then you can just fill in the online form. If you can do regular giving by gift aid, it makes it even easier on our church suite giving. If you go to ctflondon.com slash give, you can do it through there. Um, and also, don't worry, I know it's not the best system of online giving, but we're in the process of changing it. And so it's going to get easier to give to the kingdom of God. But hey, that also, as you give today, here's some things that your gift will go towards. Have you heard about Something's Brewing? Chloe's going to say some more in a bit. And so something's brewing. We're on a venture and an adventure where God is moving in our church family to change Pinner. And Chloe's going to share some more about that. And so the giving today is going to go into that. We have amazing teams in this church who get supported, amazing staff who get blessed. We get amazing facilities like this to use on a Sunday to take Pinner and then London and then the world for Jesus. But also we have a mission trip coming up. And so as you're doing the offering, the baskets should be going around. I should be seeing movement. Is they, are they moving? Or is somebody just putting loads of money in one as they're staying still? But also I'm just going to do a few notices as well while the baskets are coming around. And then we'll finish up with offering declaration number two, please, Tanya. But a few notices. First of all, tomorrow night in this room, who's enjoyed the worship today? I can tell you something. God enjoyed it. Hey? He loves worship. He loves it when we praise his name. Tomorrow night, we're coming together for two hours of blessing God with upwards praise and worship that's all about him and not about us whatsoever. And so we have, every, from tomorrow night, every fortnight, dwell back in action after a three-week break. And so tomorrow night, in this room, 7.30 p.m., come to worship God and see your life change as a result. It's amazing when we just forget all the stuff and we just focus on him. He deals with all the stuff anyway. And so it's remarkable. So dwell tomorrow night. And then also, there's something else I needed to say, but I can't remember that one, so I'm going to skip on to the next one. Yes. Two Sundays time, on the 8th of April, we have Steve and Sandra... 8th of May, sorry. 8th of May, we have Steve and Sandra along with us. Now, if you guys don't know who they are, Steve and Sandra had basically, when... The Toronto Revival first kicked off in 1994. Steve was a Baptist pastor in Toronto who his church sent him to check out if the revival was legit. <laughs> Basically to go in like a Holy Spirit drug dog and check they weren't doing anything weird. And, um, and he went there and got absolutely messed up by Holy Spirit. And his church said, okay, we're going to pay you to go there every single day and support them as a ministry team and as a leader in that church building. So he was initially there and he's been there with John and Carol as a steward of who we are as Catch the Fire for years. And they now lead Catch the Fire Toronto. They also lead the European sphere of all our Catch the Fire churches. And they're going to be here on Sunday um, in three weeks, two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. Um, and then also on the Monday night for Dwell. That will be a Dwell night, but then finishing off with a special healing meeting as well, as that is something that um, Steve particularly walks in anointing of healing as well. And so that's coming up. Also, um, we have... In, on the first Sunday in June, I'm aiming for us to be able to bring back a baptism because we've been waiting for it, woo, and the weather's looking really good. And so, first Sunday of June, we're really hoping we can do baptisms, if not in June, as soon as we possibly can, as the weather's a bit nicer now, and people are out to freeze in our really cold paddling pool out the back. And so, if you want to be baptised, if you know someone who wants to get baptised, come and talk to me as well about that. That'd be awesome. Um, and then I believe that's it for our Holy Spirit-filled notices today. So why don't we, if you can... Newcomers lunch today. Newcomers lunch today, guys. So if you... Oh, some of the people, so if you're over there, there's someone over here as well. If this is your first time with us today, then please hang around after the service because... Why don't you stand up, Heather? This is Heather. She's wonderful. She's really, really lovely. And she's going to be going out for lunch to one of the local restaurants in Pinner. And if you're a newcomer and you want to hang out and get to know our church family a bit better, then please... Yeah, it doesn't have to be your first Sunday. That's a very good point, Steve. But if you want to hang out with some of our guys and get to know the church a bit better, then grab Heather at the end of the service, metaphorically, not literally, and, and then you'll be able to join in. 
Yeah, um, yeah, Heather will, she's really high touch, right? So, no, she's not at all. <laughs> and so, let's do that. But why don't we do the offering declaration? Could we get that? So if you can, why don't you jump on your feet? And we're going to put our mouths where our money is, not the other way around. And we're going to decree a thing and see it established. So why don't you do this with me? As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me so that I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Come on, guys. So good. And then one last note, so I just remember what it was. We are aiming very soon to take a team to Bulgaria and to Romania to do crisis relief work with Ukrainian refugees. We have an amazing connection with two organizations out there, both of which, um, one long story short, is a Ukrainian pastor couple who started a church in Bulgaria two years ago and the Lord said, I want you to go to Bulgaria, start a church because you're gonna be rescuing and helping orphans and widows from the Ukraine. For two years, they've labored and prepared the ground not knowing what it was for and asking the Lord and then suddenly they've had, I think it's like three and a half thousand refugees through their doors and they're currently caring actively for about 300 in their church community. They've just opened a brand new center. It's awesome. We wanna go and help them. Also, a church in Romania right on the sea border nearest to Odessa um, linked with Andrea and Louis Porfire they're good friends there they are a church of 50 people new church plan the moment the Ukraine crisis started their whole church took annual leave or unpaid leave and went and joined the border control at their local border because there was only two employed staff there and they had no idea what to do with the numbers and so they gave up their time for two weeks to work full time as voluntary border control staff and welcome people into the country isn't that amazing and they currently have a hundred um, adults and then about 50 children as well they are feeding every day housing every day, caring for every day. And so we're going to go and do a beach mission there, which is going to be awesome. Working with them, pouring into them, but also as the crisis goes on in Ukraine, welcoming more people and just pouring the love of Jesus out upon them. And so we're working on the details. It's going to be really soon, potentially even as close as three weeks away that we're going. And so if you want to go, we're going to be very prayerful about who goes and we're going to be very careful about who goes as well because this is not just a I'm gone to get my mission badge but we're going to go love on some people who really need it in a moment of crisis and so if you want to come please please talk to Stu or talk to me and we'll be getting information out ASAP but we want to get people on the ground and help there so let me know about that but anyway Chloe guys can you just stand with me for a moment if you can stand I just I felt like there's been lots of notices and stuff which is all really good but just just pop your gaze back on on the eyes of Jesus for a moment and just settle there just settle there just settle start of this particular part of the word that the Lord was challenging some of you to just be with him this week just for moments not with your prayer list not with any requests just you and him and even now some of you are feeling like I don't know what to do but 
Just say hi, Holy Spirit. Just say hi. Tell him he's welcome. Wow. Don't get bored of just being. wanting to see him. Holy Spirit, would you be so kind and settle upon us right now? Just settle upon us, settle upon our households, settle upon our businesses. We want to be landing paths for your glory, Jesus. We don't want to be stagnant. We don't want to be in smelly ponds. We want to be in the flow of the river. And I declare, let the river flow this morning, God. Let the river flow from the temple, the fresh flow of living water this morning. Holy Spirit, would you increase the rapids in our lives? I just had a vision of, of center parks and, and, you know, going down those rapids and you're like, woo, I love them. I scream as I go down. I cannot be silent. And I felt like the Lord is going to be lifting up the restrictions today. And so, Father, we just come to you. If you, if you want to be caught up in the river of God, the, the anointing that flows from heaven, Jesus Himself, just raise your hands this morning. Just lift your hands to Him. Father, I ask that you would release the rapids of the river this morning and, and get us caught up with heaven this morning. Father, we don't want to just preach and teach. We want it to be lasting revelation of the river of God that bursts from us because of where you've taken us, God. Let us overflow with the presence. Let us never forget the Holy Spirit. You're worthy to be wanted, God. You're worth wanting. You're worth wanting. And I just felt like for some of you, you've never said, hi, Holy Spirit, or you haven't done for a while. And just take this opportunity. Just say hi to Him right now. Come on, speak to Him. The person of the Holy Spirit, the one who is, who was, who is to come and is upon us, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would you come right now? Would you come? Would you come and we declare more love and more power in the song today. And I ask for a release of more love and more power in every person right across this room this morning. I ask God that your kingdom will come and your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just wait on Him for a moment. Just wait on Him. Just wait. In fact, can we just sing that once? More love, more power. Is it the right key? If it's not, can you just lead it? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a desperation. There's a desperation this morning before we get into the Word.
morning. Whether we're church ministers, whether we lead families, whether we're business and marketplace leaders, whether we're hairdressers, whether we're dog walkers, God, there's a hunger in this room this morning. Father, I ask that the book of Acts would become more real than we've ever experienced, God. And I'm going off peace right now, but I felt like there hasn't been that same cry from some of us like there used to be. Father, I ask you to rip the grave clothes off us of lethargy, rip the grave clothes of of frustration off us this morning. And would you lead us to that place of desperation for the river? Lead us to the place, God. I don't want a good career. I want to serve Jesus. I don't want to make tons of money to save. I want to give to mission, God. I want to be one who looks you in the eyes when I get to heaven one day and says, good and faithful servant, you bowed before me. You stewarded me. You stewarded what I gave you. You stewarded people. You stewarded love. You stewarded power. You stewarded finances. Good and faithful servant, take your place. Don't seek to be a leader of a ministry. Don't seek to be 
right now. Say, I will seek you. I will seek you. I will seek you. And guess what? You will find him. You will find him. You will find him. And all these things shall be added unto you. But just ask him for more. More love, more power. Come on. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Thick in your presence. word that has come from the Father's heart, that has come through the atmosphere, that has come through and landed in your hearts. And I declare it's time. Those unfulfilled prophetic words that have been lingering. Father, we ask for life over them right now. We speak life. Come on, speak life over those words, church. Speak life. It's the breath of God. He's the one that makes it happen, not a prophet. He's the one. He's the one. And Father, we just repent for where prophecy has been idolized, where the hunger for prophecy has been greater than the hunger for Jesus. And we banish it from our lives and from our descendants, from our generations to come. And we call forth a purity of the presence of God to breathe on the words that have come from the Father's lips. Enthrone God with your song so that your faith isn't in barrenness, but is in Him. Where you see barrenness, sing. Where you see wilderness, sing. That's Isaiah 54, where you see anything contrary to heaven. The command in Isaiah 54 opens with sing. Sing, O barren woman. It's a command and it's, it's a liking. It, 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 the, the ex, it's talking about the exile and it's a likening it to, to being barren. The desperation for the presence of God in our lives is what God said to me this week. He said, stop acting like you don't have the presence of God. More love, more power. And if you've got nothing, sing. When a barren woman is told she's barren, I know that I was told that. I had nothing. I had a choice to sing. And now wherever I see anything masquerading as barren, I sing. I will not see fruitlessness in the land that I'm living in. I will not see businesses fail. I will not see mindsets change the effect and the outcome of the glory story of heaven. For me and my house, I will sing until I see something shift. I will sing until I start to believe again. I am done with looking at things and crying, this is me talking, and crying out saying, I've got nothing. You've got everything. You've got the fullness of the power of the Spirit. So if you have 20 people in your church plan, sing. When you sing to the King, He will trust your heart. Don't look at numbers. Don't look at names. Look at the one who's worshipping. Look at the one and say, if I'm only here because one person's encountering God, that's all that matters. You look at your businesses 
and you say, sing. You look at your businesses and your houses, Matt Kimani. You go in and it looks barren. Start singing to the walls. And I believe the Lord is going to release angels on assignment to make over houses quicker than you've ever seen before. When you start to sing into the walls, to the north, the south, the east and the west, there's something prophetic, church, about singing. And do you know what it does? It realigns our heart with the truth. The moment I'm like, oh, this is awful. I get wallowed up in pity. But the moment I'm like, more love. Whoa. Shabba. I felt it then. That's not a preaching fake thing. That's a, as soon as you sing more love, whose love are you looking for? The world's or Jesus's? (laughs) Whose affirmation are you looking for? fake church can't happen anymore and I'm talking about you as a church you are a church in your own right you are a temple fake cannot happen anymore because Jesus is coming he's looking for authenticity he's looking for someone that would turn to I 54 that I am going to get to and he's looking for someone to go oh my God he speaks truth He's looking for someone to say, you know what? No matter what it looks like coming out of COVID, we're going to fly. We're going to soar. We're going to hear the lion roar. We're going to sing to the King. We're going to get our dancing shoes on no matter what it takes. And the moment we realign to that, everything of our soul has to bow down because the devil's looking for our soul agreement. And the moment we look with pity on our own circumstances, He's got us. And so just raise your hands for a minute. I want to do a quick bit of deliverance before I go into, whoa, anything else. Father, in the name of Jesus, I as mum of the house take authority over every pity party in Jesus' name. That's not saying you don't feel. That's the pastor in me. You will feel. But this is the apostle. Every pity party right now in Jesus' Name crashes to the floor in Jesus' Name. I pull you up out of the mud. I pull you out of the place that says I can't. I bring you back into the place that says He can. If He can, I can. If He will, I will. If He goes, I go. If He sings, I sing. Whatever it takes, I pull you up out of that place and I banish Everything contrary to the Spirit right now off of your minds, off of your hearts, off of your souls, off of your ears, off of your feet. I prophesy your feet will dance. You will dance. There will be no more mourning. There will be singing. There will be no more mourning. There will be dancing. There will be no more shadows. There will be light. And in Jesus' Name, we shift the shadows off of you. Shadows of sickness go right now. The devil is a liar. Your God speaks truth. The devil is a liar and I call you back into the place of fullness right now. I call you back into the place of fullness in Jesus' Name. And I call you to the place of more love, more love, more love, more love, more power. Come on, come on, sing it out.
right ear has been healed right now. Someone's got a mole that you're worried is cancerous. And I just saw the father lifting the head off that and drawing out the rotten cells and putting his finger on it and said, heal in Jesus name. So if that's you, just take it right now. His fingers going in. I saw it in the spirit. It's just going in right now. I saw someone's feet being healed. You've been longing to dance for a long time and the Lord's healing your feet right now. I speak to the mesotarsals, the tarsals and the phalanges and I call them in line with heaven. The fatty pads of the tissues, the ankles, every muscle and fibre in those feet be healed in Jesus name right now with more love, more power, more love, more power. If you need healing in your body, just put your hand on that area and just keep singing. Don't look to the sickness, look to the one behind the miracle. It's the the Ruach of God, the breath of God. Let Him fill. Let Him fill your lungs. When was the last time you asked Him to fill you? It doesn't say once a year at a conference. It's be continually filled by Him. Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us. Am I the only one who wants to be filled? Come on, say it to Him. I can't fill you for you. He, He will fill you. He will fill you. Thank you, God. Just come, just come, just come. You can, you can settle here if you want. I wanna, I have to do this. I have to, God, show me an impartation, particularly for marketplace leaders and people in business. I'm gonna get here, but don't lose that place. You can, you can stay where you are or you can return to your chairs, but I need you to know that something's up. Can you feel it? <laughs> What would your business look like if you did this? On Monday morning, you get there at 6 a.m. in your office and just you and Him crying out for more love and more power. It's like pray for the workers that sit on their chairs. Pray for the students that come into your rooms, your classrooms. Pray, declare a thing over the seats. More love, more power. Guys, we can't just walk along as if we're just normal human beings. There ain't nothing normal about you. (laughs) You're supernatural. Please don't be normal. It doesn't look pretty to Jesus. Supernatural is who we are. Someone say hallelujah. And I really felt like today when I say something, Stu said it earlier, I want you to yell out if you want something, I'm having it. I'm having it. I'm having it. Can someone say, I'm having it? Because God isn't looking for pacification during a preach and to go home and say, that says, that says, it sounded nice. It was lovely. It was this, it was that. God's looking for people that are tenacious. Catalambado is the name and the word in scripture where you grab something and you don't let go like a dog with a bone. Catalambado. Someone say, Catalambado. You grab it and you will not let go. You grab hold of your future. You grab hold of your story. You grab hold of your business. The things that God has given you because He wants to bless you. He's looking to see if you're going to be faithful or if you're going to get out early and abandon ship. And if we abandon ship too early, He won't fulfill what He wants to fulfill through you. And He'll he'll look at you and be like, but... If you'd have just known the power and the love upon you, we could have done this together. So stop doing it on your own. It won't work. Catalambado onto the things that God has given you and just declare over it more love, more power. 
More love, more power. More love, more power. I am fed up of seeing the way COVID has made some things fail. Has brought death to things, death to people. I'm done with it. And God is looking for faithful ones like this in Isaiah who are going to stand and be like, you know what? Sing. I'm going to sing. And then what happens? All heaven breaks open. So turn with me to Isaiah 54. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at your friend and say, something's brewing. <laughs> Something as sure as sure as heaven is brewing. Please don't say as sure as hell. Let's say as sure as heaven. It's much nicer. Look at your friend and say, as sure as heaven, something is brewing. And then say to them, as sure as heaven, you are amazing. <laughs> okay, I've got so many notes, but I don't know. Guys, you're amazing. Do you want to just, are you in the place where you want to keep swaying? You're feeling him? Or you can sit, whatever you want to do, because we're going to go into something afterwards. Okay, Isaiah 54. State of this Bible. Sing, O barren woman. Someone say, Sing. sing. Someone say, More love. More, love. More power. More and why don't you just look at him and say, Jesus? Jesus. Sing. 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 There's something about singing that brings a joyful sound. It is a joyful sound. And the moment I start to sing, oh, everything falls off. It's like, Whoa. Whoa, there he is. There he is. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You know, I love this because Israel here has been compared to a barren woman. And I wrote in my scribbled in my Bible, deal with barrenness through song. Deal through barrenness. Some of you worship leaders have not yet written songs and you're going to deal with barrenness through writing songs. Some of you singers are going to start to sing and see demons fleeing like you've never seen before. But you've got to be expectant. You've got to be like, you know what? Everything's possible. When you do that, everything's possible. You've not laboured with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. And I, I, I looked at that and I, was, I stopped there this week and I journaled down, oh my gosh, enthrone God in song in order to release the miraculous. When you enthrone God with your singing, with your worship, something happens. What happens when the song came? Go to verse two. Enlarge the place of your tent. Someone say enlarge. Okay, that doesn't say shrink. That doesn't say pull back. It says enlarge. What does enla <laughs> enlarge mean there? It's, it's spreading out. It's expansion. It's pulling up. It's increasing. God is asking you, I dare you to increase even in this next week. Can we have the, the keys down just a little bit? Are you having it? You don't look like you're having it. Jump up on your feet. You're having it, Dan. Come on. He's having it. Enlarge the place of your tent. There's an act of faith that God is looking at. That isn't a can you please. It's an outright command. It's a command to say enlarge. And you know there's a, um, a term shrinking violets. Yeah, stop being a shrinking violet. Like we're coming to summer. The spring is here. The winter is gone. The spring is here. It's God is getting ready for a move like we've never experienced. And it's not about meeting on a Sunday. This empowers us. This empowers us to be revival out there, to be revival in Pinner, in the marketplace in London, up in Manchester, in the housing market, Matt Kamani, Louis. May you be known in the UK as spirit-filled leaders in the marketplace who don't take second best and who stand and say to the estate agents, the Father has given me the keys to this house. Do you want to meet him? And I felt like as soon as you said that, something was going to open up for each of you. God is giving you opportunities to say, you know what? This is not my doing, it's His. The moment we step into His doing, we're... Oh, I was going to say something I can't say then. We're stuffed. <laughs> we're stuffed. <laughs> we're stuffed. Enlarge. Look at your friend and say, enlarge. And then it says, the place of your tent. The tent there, it, well, no, let's go to the place first. It's a location, it's a city, it's a region, it's a space. Wherever you place your foot, you can enlarge. 
It's a location. Topos is the Greek word. Topos is where you literally have authority in that place. Joshua 1 verse 3. He has given us the land where we stand. How many of you walk the streets and be like, whoa, Shabbat, I now own that street. (laughs) How many of you just walk into Waitrose and be like, oh, I'm just a visitor. I don't. That's where I get so many good deals. I walk in, I'm like, I own this land in the spirit realm. This is my authority. That's why I get to the checkout and they're like, oh, have that for free. Oh, have that for free. Oh, do you want this for free? I don't go about my daily life thinking I'm a visitor here. I'm a citizen of heaven and where I'm a citizen of heaven, heaven comes with me. We have to have a mindset shift if we're going to fulfill the mandate that God has given us individually, corporately, as a church, as a government in this nation. Look at your friend and say enlarge. Enlarge. So look at your feet and say enlarge. (laughs) Enlarge. Enlarge. Some of your footprints are are born to be the size of Australia. Some of the authority, the footprint that God has given you is born to be the size of a government. Who's having it? Go on then. (laughs) Some of your footprint is born to literally seal across the globe something that God is about to birth. But your footprint is also due to seal your family unit, to see the presence of God literally explode through your children's children. We have footprints. We only have the authority we dare to believe our footprints have in line with heaven. We won't have the authority if we don't believe it and don't declare it. So this here, oh gosh, I'm only on the third word of, yeah, enlarge the place. So wherever your sphere of influence is, make sure your footprint is fat in the spirit realm. Look up to heaven and say, enlarge my footprint. And then what does it say? Oh, at the place of your tent. It's like, it's like some people think they're on their own in a tent. And I look at the tent and it's like, you could think you're on your own, but the moment you say enlarge, what I love when God says lift up the tent pegs, as you lift a tent peg when on a windy day, the wind comes in and gets under your sails. It's like, whoa, imagine the presence of God. This is all about the presence of God. So when you enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling, the moment you do that, the Holy Spirit is like, Under he goes. Stop isolating yourself in a hidden little tent. It's time to lift the pegs up, welcome other people in so that expansion can come. The moment you think you can do it on your own, you've got a problem. We're called a body. And when we lift up the tent pegs, we're like, Holy Spirit, come on, come on. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's brewing something. And I love the word enlarge. It's a statement of faith. And I had a dream in 2006 and I woke up and I told Stu and I said, Stu, something's brewing. Something's brewing in the natural, something's brewing in the spirit. And I know one day we're going to have a coffee hub called Something's Brewing. And we've talked a lot about it. Something's brewing in the spirit. There's going to be somewhere to bring people to where they meet the presence of God like nowhere else on the planet. We've been waiting, we've been wondering, we've been disobedient. Well, now we've been obedient and we're waiting to sign the contracts. Church, just up there is a very large dwelling that is gonna, just up there. Well, I take that one too, I'm having it. Woo! I'm having that one and that one. There's a, there's a large dwelling and we're like, should we, shouldn't we? And the Lord rebuked me and he's like, glow. I told you in 2006 and you've been disobedient for far too long. And it's that enlarge is the moment of faith. God's waiting for us as an act of faith to pull up those wretched pegs. I hate sleeping in a small tent, people. I mean, I don't like it. I like to stand up. I like to have a mirror hanging from the middle so I can just see how beautiful I look in the morning. Someone say, I'm having it. I love it. I don't like a small tent. And so one of the things God's looking for in this season, the act of faith is to pull it up. When you pull it up, the Spirit of God, it's time to fly. 
As soon as you lift it up, the wind of the Spirit comes. And this is what I love. Let them stretch out the curtains. Oh. Do not refrain. Do not hold back. Do not hinder. Do not hold on. Lengthen. Make them long and grow. Lengthen your cords. And I'm like looking at the cords. I'm like, oh God. Oh God, I want to hold on. I want to hold on. Some of you need to expand your business and employ four or five people before you see the need. That is what this scripture is looking at. Before you fill the tent, expand and get ready. Get ready for revival. Get ready for provision. Get ready for finances. Some of you need to open a savings account because God is about to fill it with a lot of money. (laughs) I'm having that one. In fact, restoring of generations stolen of inheritance is coming back. It's coming back. I saw real quickly in the spirit generational lines. I saw a generational tree. And I felt like in 1762, that's what I'm seeing in the spirit right now, someone stole from someone's father. And I believe it's coming back. I just saw like the DNA strand coming back, coming back, coming back. So Father, right now we declare as we enlarge our tents, would you restore what the enemy has stolen? We break the power of generational curses of robbery of inheritance and we call it back today and now in Jesus name someone say amen Amen. strengthen your stakes expand and spread out Ooh, just put your arms out put your arms out and just tell your friend look you're in my tent (laughs) that's what it's meant to be you're in my tent the moment we stretch out it's like whoa And you could be living in America, but still in my tent when I'm in England. You could be living in Kenya and still in my tent. Because this isn't about names of companies or names of movements. It's about a body and a family who dare to believe that God is real. Where two or three come together, that's all the unity we need to see God fly. To see us soaring like eagles, to hear the lion roaring. And when we're in this place of an act of faith, of lifting up the pegs, I truly believe the devil hates it and he will get out of there. Because he'll be like, oh my God, they believe him more than they believe me they believe God this God they believe him more than they believe me by the way yes I do there you go someone else say yes I do (laughs) oh gosh I'm sorry I'm not sorry at all (laughs) Uh, will someone give me just five minutes more put your hand up if you give me five five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty thirty five forty forty five fifty great that's a real old one (laughs) Stu wants to hide. Okay, four, you shall expand. Someone say, I shall expand. To the right and to the left. Put your hands out again. God is lifting the tent pegs. You're not born to be restricted. You're born to fly with the body. You're not born to be isolated and trying to make something happen on your own. You're born to be soaring with like-minded people who want to see you succeed and celebrate the glory of heaven through you. That's who we're called to. That's who I'm called to be, Shireen. That's who you are to me. You are so encouraging. You love me so well. Thank you. Because when someone's filled with more power and more love and they spend their days, even though they're working, they spend their days mindful of God, you feel it. You feel it from their heart. Estate agents will feel it from your heart. Your children will feel it from your heart. They'll know that you're expecting them to expand and multiply. Anyway, we went. And your descendants will inherit, there we go, the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. It's time the presence of God inhabits his places again. And this is part of something's brewing. We are taking back some of the land in this place as a gateway to London. And we really feel excited about spiritual readings, the prophetic. It will be a coffee hub, but it will also be a kid's area we're going to have nct classes meet there and all kinds of things we're going to have marriage courses in the evenings which we are planning a date for already there is so much that is going to happen but more than anything when we're out there or when you're wandering up and down a high street and you get talking to someone you can say hey there's a place i know that would really love to buy you a coffee 
Give them a card. Let them be welcomed into a place of more love and more power. And I tell you what, when we have that as an atmosphere, it doesn't matter whether you're atheist, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're someone of a, a different faith to those. When you meet more love and more power, my God, you will change. God is looking to be someone in your heart who releases such a freedom through everything you do. And that's just the vision for something's brewing along with a load of other things and a transformation center and everything. But the point being, the power of more love, the power of Jesus, when we read scriptures like this, that's when faith rises because we know the one who's going to do it all. And so look at your friend and say, enlarge the place, your tent, And then say, do not spare. And do not spare, I truly believe, can be interpreted in different ways, including don't hold on to too much cash, people. God's got a job to do. Sow in to those tents. Sow in to those people. Stand with them. If you believe that God... And and, and Steve... this um, Hold on, I'm going to go somewhere. Steve Witt was on the phone to Stu the other day. I'm not hold on to you. Um, Steve Witt was on the phone the other day from Bethel, Cleveland, and he said to Stu, something is about to happen with you guys in London that is going to be a model that by the end of the year, everyone wants to know about around the world. It's going to be likened to that of Alpha, but it won't be Alpha. It's that kind of level of influence. And you will have two properties. He did not know about this first one, and he doesn't know about another one that I got my eye on. <laughs> Someone say, we're having it. Come on. Right there, before you know about it, you say, I'm having it. That's the point. Woo! So I'm excited. (laughs) That's the point. Before we see it, we say we're going to have it. We're going to pick up the pegs. And then in that moment, the wind of the Spirit will be like, oh my God, they're serious. They believe me. Just stand with me. I've not done any of my notes. I'm just going to say, every possibility of expansion requires us to turn up the risk and faith in advance of the miracle. Get a bigger tent before there is a reason for a bigger tent. That's what that scripture is saying. Expand before you have a reason to so that you're ready. Make us ready, God. Just lift up your hands to heaven right now. Come on, put them right up in the air. Obedience will lead to increase. That's that scripture. Sing if you feel barren and then boom, you'll suddenly feel like enlarging. That's what God showed me about this scripture. When I'm singing, even though I feel like I might be in the wilderness or barren, I choose to worship him. And in that moment, a shift will happen in my heart and suddenly I'll see Jesus, like we've been singing about all morning. And when I see Jesus, I'll be like, woohoo, let's take up all the pegs. But if you're feeling barren, you'll stay feeling barren. If you don't choose to realign with the truth of the fruit of heaven that is about to explode in your life. As a father right now, in the name of Jesus, we repent. You may want to say this with me. We repent for every time that we have not had faith, for every time that we have been stuck in a rut as business leaders, as church leaders, as family leaders um, in our families, God, as parents, we repent for the times that we've stifled the Spirit of God through disobedience, that we've stifled the Spirit of God and we haven't said, my foot could be the blueprint and the footprint of the whole of Australia. Where we haven't said, wherever I place my foot, I know I have authority, God, we repent for our lack of faith. Come on, say it. I repent repent for my lack of faith and when I've disappointed you God but I thank you that you don't stay disappointed (laughs) I thank you God that you champion me you're a God of the second chances give us a second chance God we choose to fling wide these sides of the tent come on just fling your arms up in the air but don't hit the person next to you lift up the pegs Move the curtains up. Holy Spirit, would you breathe? Would you breathe as we are grateful to you, as we we have a gratitude uh, in our hearts, as we sing hallelujah, 
as we love you, God. Would you be the wind under our sails, God? Would you literally set us sail from this moment? We put the cross of Christ between us and everything of defeat, everything of control, everything of death, everything of the spirit of death. And we declare today up from the graves He arose last week. He is no longer dead. I am alive in Him. Holy Spirit, would you breathe? 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 Some of you have been battling with putting down the hatches. You've been hiding. You've been withdrawing. Right now in Jesus' Name, I rebuke that demon in the Name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I call you out of hiding. I call you back into family. I call you back into wholeness. I call you back into provision. I call you back into... I call you back into the presence of God. I call you back into the river. I pull you back. Sometimes people are sitting on the bank and it's cold and they just need a hand to welcome them back into the flow of the river. And so if that's you, just stretch out your hand. If you want to be back in the river, just stretch it out. Come on, I pull you back in. There you go. Simple. In you come. Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. And some of you need to do that with your businesses. I saw you looking over blueprints of your businesses and five and 10 year, I don't know whether to say this, five and 10 year plans. And I saw the Lord laughing. And he's like, that's a great plan, but that's man's plan. And I saw you looking at that piece of paper and scribbling out your 10 year plan. And the spirit of the Lord was like, double it, triple it, quadruple it. Get ready, get ready, get ready. You've been thinking too small. It's time to think bigger. Portfolios are going to increase. And I'm going to finish before we have an impartation with this that um, the Lord showed me earlier. And I journaled it on the way to church. Some of us don't realise that coming to church and singing, getting up in the morning and singing, bowing down and singing is simply the pathway to your miracle and freedom. It's the deliverance your business needs. Lay hand on your business walls. It's keys to depression fleeing. It's what your mind needs. It's what your family needs. The barrenness you are in, the wilderness you are in, the frustration or the tiredness you are in, the sickness you are in will end or seem easier when you open your mouth and sing hallelujah through the gratitude of our hearts to our King. So right now, Father, I ask for an impartation of faith in the room. Would you release an impartation of faith? May it be like Isaiah 54 talks about, that we won't even second guess the moment and we will just fling up those pegs, stretch wide, that we would take authority over everywhere we step our foot and we speak increase right now, financial increase, people provision, leader increase, uh, influence in the marketplace, people coming to us asking how do you do that God there's got to be a time coming where the marketplace people that don't yet know Jesus simply say I want what you've got he is more powerful than anything that they can ever do he's more powerful than any dream they can ever have so father we call forth the influence in the marketplace to receive that incredible anointing the Luke 24 of God on us tarry in the city and let him endure you with power from on high and as he endures you you will have the answers to everything he has given you everything that they want God would you come thank you Jesus we were gonna end with a song do you want to do it yeah okay well this is an important song we're going to end with a song. And if people want to come forward, you can go and get your kids. But if you want to come forward, I can pray for you while we're singing. This is an important song that I've been on repeat all week for me. It's my gratitude and simple hallelujah of when I'm singing, things shift. So Father, we lift up the pegs. We create a vacuum. We allow the wind of the Spirit to blow on our act of faith. And we thank you for testimonies this week that are going to come in. In Jesus' name of the provision and the power and the influence that you are going to bring to this house. And we just declare, all God's people say, big amen. Amen. Come on, let's sing this together as a declaration. It may be a new song to you.
Bless you guys. Thank you for joining us for church this afternoon, this morning. And uh, we just bless you to know the power and the presence and the love of God this afternoon. That, that impartation of your territory being expanded, your tent being stretched would happen in Jesus' mighty name. And as Chloe was ministering, I felt the Lord say that a tent that is loose flaps in the wind and the elements get through it. But when a tent is tight, when the tent poles are doing their job correctly, then the elements can't get in and it's a place of safety and of power. And so I bless you as you joined us today to receive an impartation of your tent pegs being pulled and stretched, your poles being in tension, and your area, your place of influence being expanded in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. I bless you today. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we'll see you online next week for church. Bless you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.